So hello folks. It's been a while. This is Garth at GW Leathercraft. And we've been in a bit of a hot spell here. Hot and humid. Um, I'm in Nova Scotia, Canada, and one thing seems to run through all Canadians is a, <laughs> well, not all of them. Some of them like the heat. I'm not one of them, anyway. Um, so I've got the air conditioning on, and I've got a fan going, and it's a bit noisy in here. Um, and I'm sweating. I'm still sweating, but um, I'm going to try to knock out a video for you. Now, uh, just the other night on my uh, um, Etsy, in my Etsy store, I posted a new listing for uh, a digital download of this very pattern. Now, this is my Thamesville uh, Marauder pattern. Um, it is a uh, um, very popular for cowboy action shooting. Um, fast draw shooters are very fussy, but it certainly could be used for fast draw. There is no, there's zero retention on the on the um, on the holster or on the gun, and and it has a nice drop to it. But you know they're they're a fussy bunch, that's for sure. Um, and for good reason. I'm not saying anything against it, but the um, this here is very popular and I wanted to um, offer it as a digital download. Now it's not free, um, but um, it's what I consider a reasonable price given uh, the amount of work that I went into developing the pattern. Now along with the four pages of pattern that you glue and put together, there is the uh, three pages of instruction. Uh, I'm a bit long-winded when I get writing, but anyway, I'm also putting up this video to go along with it. Now, the video is free, and you can just watch the video, and you don't have to buy the pattern. If you want to develop it yourself, that's the way I did it, but, you know, um, maybe it'd be easier for you. Maybe you're a little scared to waste some leather, and that's pretty much what you're going to do if you start out from scratch. So, this here will give you a you know, pretty good uh, basis, and, and and if you want to uh, to adapt it to something else, uh, right now this is for uh, uh, 1873 single action army or any clone that's made off of that same shape. Uh, a new Vaquero would be also included in that. Um, the um, and it's a five and a half inch barrel, which. Um, I'm going to use this, when I finish this holster, I'm going to use it for taking some pictures of, so it's, um, the, it's from a, from a picture standpoint, from a selling set standpoint, a five and a half inch holster looks pretty good. Four and a half, it looks a little stubby. Seven and a half, it looks a little long, but a five and a half works pretty good. So that's what I go with when I take pictures of them for my store. Anyway, so. That's what I started with. Maybe more will come. But anyway, so what we start with is the pattern. Now this, uh, you will get uh, this, and you'll print it out in three, three, uh, on three paper, three pieces of paper. This is one, this is the other, and this is the other. You'll cut them out, glue them together. That's all you have to do. And you'll end up with this. If you glue it to uh, cardstock or something, then you'll have a, a good heavy pattern. So. The pattern that I sent you, if it's right side up, it's for a right hand holster. So uh, if you want it for a left hand, you have to flip it over. And this is the outer here. I'm going to line this one. This is the outer. This is uh, Shaheen uh, holster and strap in the, in the dark brown. Uh, well, actually, I call it dark brown. It's espresso or espresso um, in, the, in there. Uh, on their catalog, in their catalog. Now, if you're just starting out, uh, I wouldn't advise, you know, when you're going to try to build one holster, I wouldn't advise going and buying a, a side of leather a holster and strap. I mean, that's a little, a little ridiculous, but I guess you could. Uh, it's certainly nice to work with. 
um, and it's all dyed, but uh, um, and the, the, the cheaper, more probably more reasonable option is, is just tooling, just tooling leather and then dye it whatever color you want. Now of course you're not going to get probably you're probably not going to get it to be as uh, evenly dyed. You're going to have to put up with a little unevenness in your dyeing, but you know um, maybe you'll have a good one, right? <laughs> Anybody that's done this before knows that dyeing is uh, uh, well, I wouldn't say hit and miss, but it's uh, it's not it's not as consistent as you would hope. Now, I'll just go over the holes since I'm doing them here now. These this these two holes are for your hammer thong. They they're in the outside part, but not in the lining. These three holes, the two outer ones are for rivets, and the inner one is for uh, T nut, okay. Um, the T nut goes in. The, uh, uh, I, uh, well, I'll explain that later. Anyway, that's what they're for. This is for the for the other end of the T nut. We'll get to that. And of course, the slots for the strap. Now, with that done, yes. I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out. Now, I don't. I I cut this out, and and so I could put it on my my uh, bench and and do the final cutting over here. And you may notice a fair amount of waste. And that is one thing I notice with holsters. They are such an odd shape that you're gonna you should expect a fair amount of waste. If if uh, if waste if a lot of waste makes you cry, um, then uh, maybe use a cheaper leather because there's going to be waste. Now this here, like I said, I guess I didn't tell you how thick it is. This is four and a half, four to five ounce um, holster and strap, and uh, I'd, I'd use the four and a half ounce in the. Um, in the tooling leather as well. Now you can use uh, 
Uh, five to six, it makes the holster a little thick for my liking, uh, because of course it's lying, you know, with a double thick. Um, now I have used uh, five to six for the outside and three to four for the inside, which sort of makes it the same thickness, but um, the, the inside, the lining seemed a little bit thin to me. I just didn't like it. So this is what I use. This is what I prefer. And, and as long as I can get it, then I'm good. I, I have uh, the same stuff in the chestnut and I, COVID is driving me crazy, but the, uh, I wasn't able to get the four and a half. I had to take five to six and it makes the holsters and they're good and sturdy and anybody getting one is going to love it but it's it's just hard to get them to fold over to work with them they're just harder to work with so anyway so we're here now um the only thing left right now to do that now i cut these holes punch these holes now for these holes here i use a just an oval punch like a belt hole punch it's a large one it's a Depending on where you look, it's an it's a number nine or a quarter in size. Um, and I just punch them like that. Um, and I only mark the two outer holes in case you were wondering. And I I punch the inner hole after I get a little ways along. But the outer holes I punch now. That hole and those slots I do late. Okay, now there is more that we can do, but this here, uh, right now, would be the time to do the tooling. Now, um, I am. I would just as soon not tool it. Uh, but I, I am going to tool it. Uh, the tooling pattern that I'm using is a new one I, I want to use. And uh, because most of my stuff doesn't have much tooling on it, I like it that way. But I'm going to offer one with a little bit of extra tooling. And so I'm going to do that now, or before I go any further with that piece. What we are going to do is we're going to uh, work on the lining part. Now, there's not much to do to the lining. This is the lining. I've got it rough side up, and if you're if you've got your lining laid out rough side up, then you want your pattern put on the same as it was for your outer right side up. If you understand what I mean, when you when you're when you're draw, tracing your pattern onto your outer part, you want it the pattern right side up. So that's right handed. Okay, then. When you chuck that aside and you go to your lining, if your lining is rough side up, you want to orient the pattern the same. Now, it may seem that I'm belaboring that point, <laughs> but I've got a, uh, a trail of mistakes behind me, so um, anybody that makes any any of these, that's one thing you, you learn the hard way. Now all I do, is I get it rough side up, I get it laid out right, I trace the outline. Uh, I don't need to worry about any of these holes because they don't go in, the lining is, um, they don't punch the holes in the lining. And, I mean, there's two purposes in this lining, really. There is the purpose that it's going to make a nicer finished surface for the gun, but it also hides any hardware and makes it so that... Um, you know, you ain't got a inside of a rivet or something rubbing against the gun. You could also use suede for this. In fact, I've got an order for one with suede. Uh, some people prefer suede. Um, I don't really think that suede is quicker, but you know, that's, I don't know, everybody their own thing. Now, this is one thing that I do, make a little block around, see I, I mark the, the two holes for the um, hammer thong and you want to keep the where this is lined and you, you're not punching these holes 
in this, you want the hammer thong to go in and along and out and be hidden from inside, like in between the lining and the outer. So you don't want glue here. This is going to be glued. You don't want glue here. And I forgot my little block around this, so I'll mark that. And that hopefully keeps you from putting glue on it. Now that is ready. If this doing don't cut the size, we trim it after it's glued. So that is the lining ready for gluing. And the outer is ready for gluing, except for the tooling. We've got a little bit, a few more things that I can fit in here before I switch you off and go do the tooling. Uh, this is not a tooling tutorial, and I don't get into those, so um, the um, if you, uh, I will show you when I'm done. It's not going to be anything too fancy, but it is going to be something that more than what I normally do. That's the strap. And this here is the same leather, but it's uh, um, 9 to 10 ounce, I think. Just going to check the width of my strap because it has to fit through those slots. It's sometimes a little bit difficult to follow it with the pattern and just get it perfect. So I always try it this way. This rule is an inch wide, so that tells me that everything is fine. For some reason, this corner maybe was all right, but anyway, you do that. One thing I do, this will get beveled eventually, but that's kind of the last thing I do. I go around the edge, gives it this nice border, and uh, that's just a stitch and groover. And don't need to go any further than that out there. This will be uh, like I don't. Um, I, I fit this when I'm done, put the snaps in it. I don't measure and mark and put them in now. Um, it uh, makes the one pattern universal and this, this, so that's pretty much all it gets. It'll get beveled, I, um, yeah, might as well bevel it now, I guess. Um, now this is just a, number one in the Tandy Pro um, bevelers, the ones with the black handle. And then it may be a little bit wallowed out. I'm not sure if it's still a one or not. The one is quite, they're quite big. They don't have no real small ones in those in that series. Um,
that's not cut to length it's just trimmed a little to make it look a little better right now and uh, when the I'll trim it after I put the snaps in it to finish it up now except for the tool and that is is done um, there is also the welt and the small piece um, at the end of the hammer thong and I think that might be big enough for that welt I hate these little little bits because I hate having to go get a full high down to cut a little piece of trash like this but some you know it's just sometimes you ain't got the right piece and it just won't do it pretty close yeah we'll say it's good enough. Yeah, so I had to pause the video because I, uh, the phone. Anyway, um, I guess I said this is the welt. I don't bother with a pattern myself, but there is one included in your pattern pack. This other small piece that I mentioned, the um, well, it's the it's the tab end for the um, end of the hammer thong. Now you don't need it, I guess. Um, it makes it a little nicer. Um, I usually make mine. I mean, I don't bother with a pattern for it. It's something I come up with in my head, and I just but I supply the pattern in the pack. But I don't bother with it. I just make them up when I need them. So I start off with a a rough strip about I don't know. That's probably thirteen sixteenths or seven eighths wide and this is an English plate I put on like that and then I just cut it to a length so probably about an inch and three quarters but I mean you'll have the pattern so So this is the same, this is the 9 to 10 ounce. Um, you would want something heavy, it could be 8, eight to 9, um, but a little heavy is good. Um, this is a 5 16 um, round punch. Not that it is entire, you know, it doesn't really matter, it's not a big deal, but it, um, you're making a pretty much a keyhole for the hammer to fit into and um, and then I turn it around and I use the uh, again the quarter inch oval punch and this will be for the actual the uh, hammer thong to actually fit into And then, I don't, 
connect those two holes, I use a um, old, uh, oblong punch, half inch oblong punch. I find it does a better job uh, than a knife, but uh, you could certainly use a knife. There is lots of ways to skin this cat, but. said it did a good job and it didn't do a good job. Yeah, I'm gonna have to finish that with a knife. Um, so this gets beveled and burnish when you get to it and that is that is about it. Now all this stuff would be dyed if you were using tooling leather I'd, I'd set it up and dye it all at once. Yeah, good enough. And to number one again. Uh, I didn't bevel the the weld. I suppose you could bevel the inside. I don't bother. Um, and uh, you wouldn't bevel the outside. Um, and really, you could make the belt, or the welt, I should say, a little uh, wider than I made it. Uh, you wouldn't want to stick into the holster. You'd want to leave it stick out, and then it would give you a chance to trim something. I don't, I don't do that. I. Uh, um, but you know, if this if this is your first um, holster or first view, it, you know it could be a help to do that to leave it a little long. You're going to have to fold it over, and it's not doesn't fold real easy because it's you know it's uh, by the time you're finished, it's eight to ten ounces of leather, and you've got to hit that edge pretty close so that you so that you don't uh, have to cut a you don't want to cut much off you don't want to trim much you want it to uh, to uh, fit pretty close when you get done and then, so anyway so that is the about all I can do until I get the tooling done no no there is one other thing no I'm wrong there is one other thing I need another piece this will do. Okay, so I need a person can do a holster many ways. And there's any one of them uh, could be right, you know. Um, but this is the way I do them. Um, and well, when they're lined, when they're a line holster, and this is the block that sits below when, when it's on the belt, it sits below the belt and keeps the holster from lifting when you draw the gun. Now, the holsters, the way I make them, are zero retention, uh, meaning the gun doesn't grip, or the holster doesn't grip the gun. It pulls out quite easily, but there's always the chance that if there's nothing there, the uh, uh, the holster will lift. Nobody likes that. So the uh, so this block goes in right here on the back side of the holster, and the belt goes through and it can't really move. I mean it can slide back and forth. You can slide the holster on it but it can't go up or down. Now as well along with that is the screw. The T-nut I mentioned goes in between the two layers of leather and goes through the sticks through the block to accept the screw that comes through the skirt. And it'll be all become clear. A little bit hard to explain I mean, I did explain it, and if you understood that, that's great. But if you don't, if you didn't, and there's always a chance, you know, however slim, 
but nobody understood that, so you'll you'll figure it out along the way. Um, actually, if I had a holster here done, I could show you, but I, I guess I just don't. Anyway, the this is the block. Now you have a pattern in your pattern pack for this block. Uh, the pattern is the finished pattern. Now what you want to do though is you want to start out with two pieces slightly bigger, which is what I've done. Okay, of uh, seven to eight, eight to nine, nine to ten, something like it that. Um, and uh, I glue them back to back. Uh, the biggest reason is because you don't have to sand either edge then, but you could glue them any way you wanted to. I like to have the finish side out, so it just made sense to glue them back to back. And that's, I mean, um, I don't know if I've ever mentioned it, I just use contact cement, nothing special. Uh, some people won't use anything but barred cement. Barred cement is good. I've never had a problem with the contact cement that you get at the hardware store, and I, that's what I use. So I glue them together, and I want to. What I want is I, to finish up for size. I want a block that is an inch wide and inch and three quarters long. So. I've never bothered with a pattern for it. I just make it up like this. I um, scratch on that side of the roll and then do. Now that's moving around a lot more than what it normally does. Must be because it's on video. Anyway. So I just do that there and I get the marks and then I go and trim off like that. Could use a square here. I just uh, use the etched lines on the rule. End up with a a square end then I mark my my holes now um, the holes are an inch the, the two main holes are an inch apart so that's the first hole that's the middle hole that's the other outer hole, and that's the end of the piece. So, and that's all I do. This block uh, will hardly ever be seen. Um, it's still, you know, you want it to be decent, but it's not like it has to be. Oh my God, that's a nice looking block. You know, it's not like that. It's it's hidden between the skirt and the pouch of the holster, and the only time anybody would ever see it if they weren't went looking for it. Now I trim the corners off, and then I bevel the top edge all the way around. punch my holes. Now, these two older ones, I just use a 1 8 punch. And a 1 8 punch through that much leather, you get a bigger hole, but that's okay.
Now that center hole, that's for a T-nut. Now, depending on if, if you want to use the T-nut idea, you can. And um, if you do, uh, you know, wait until you get the T-nut to see what you're going to need for a hole. The T-nuts that I got are not small. I should say they're 832, but I mean the outside dimensions. And uh, for mine, I want a 3 16th hole. Now that's close to quarter, but... So, we're back. It's still hot. It's a few days since I got the tooling done such as I wanted. Rather simple. The leather seems to have curled because of the water that was on it. First thing when we get to this point is we put the little block on. So rivets from the back out. And we slide this on over. Set these. These are the large rapid rivets, so a press is the best way to use those. extend this hole so it goes all the way through. And then this is the T-nut. 832. I use the press for that. Okay, so that's there. Now, we're ready for glue. Just contact cement. The Pages brand, if anybody cares.
Now the one thing about using contact cement is you want good coverage. You want it right out to your edges. And that's so that uh, you make sure the edges get done. Um, and uh, you don't need a whole lot, but you need enough. You wait for it to dry. I didn't go overboard on the tooling, um, and that's a personal preference. I, uh, I've always been a history buff, and while a lot of people like a lot of tooling and a lot of silver conchos and a lot of uh, uh, fancy leather, um, in actuality, precious few cowboys ever had that. They just had enough to get by. So, since I am a student of history, it makes sense that my leather goods would be um, tied to a little bit more to history than some people's. Um, and I just don't like, personally, a lot of tooling, a lot of um, spots, a lot of conchos. I feel that less is more. And to each their own, and I, like I said, I didn't make this into a tooling tutorial, but uh, I'll sh give you a good look at uh, what I did when I get the holster done.
I'm going to shut the camera off because I'm going to sand those edges and then I'll bring you back. So that's sanded. I use a belt sander and a spindle sander for the tight spots. And before I take that, it's got a quite a burr worked up there from the sand. And before I remove that with the beveler, I just go around here. And do my uh, stitch groove. Now, of course, as everybody knows, this is the traditional way to get your stitches a little bit below the surface. Um, with most heavy sewing machines, it's not really necessary, but it gives you a good line to go by if nothing else. For anybody that's wondering, I use a Texo 5100. Not that it really matters, that's uh, about the same thing as a Class 4 Cobra or a, um, a lot of other brands or the Cowboy, I don't know the name of the Cowboy model, but they're, uh, and, and somebody once said it's basically wherever you are, that's a sort of the sewing machine you buy because so you can get service afterwards and that's why I bought a Texo because I'm um, two provinces over here in Canada uh, in Quebec there's a Texo dealer so um, that's why Texo I would have bought a Cobra but and they are sold in Canada, but there's no, well, there is a dealer, I guess, if anybody, if I said there wasn't a dealer, they would say, oh, yes, there is, but there, the problem is I don't think the dealer is, sells very much, so I don't think they have any very much um, after-sale service, so... Um, getting into a pissing war here but uh, that's just the opinion I walk away with of course you folks in the states the Cobras are well taken care of probably the Cowboys too but and maybe not so much the Texos Not that I really expect too much to go wrong with it, but That's a number one beveler in the uh, Craft Tool Pro Series.
Now, if anybody's following along or have the have any thoughts of it, and you're planning on using tooling leather, which would be my recommendation until you had enough work ahead to, to buy the this stuff. Now, I'm not sure. You might be able to get small pieces of it, but the this stuff is it's quite nice. But uh, the tooling weather, now would be the time to dye it. Okay. Um, so, but, but using the, this stuff, that now is the time to, um, for me to sew. Um, if I was using tooling leather, I would dye it, and then, then I would start sewing. So, I'm going to sew this on the bottom, there, and all the way around. And if you notice, all I'm leaving is this section here and that section there. And of course, that gets sewed after it's put together. So, one other thing I can do is I can punch these holes. This one here. Is for the bolt that goes into the T-nut. These are for the strap. Now that's a one inch. Um, oblong punch. This is a 5 16th round punch. And the only reason I do this, make it wider like this, is because of the snap. Now if you could buy an oblong punch that was an inch long and 5 16ths wide, you wouldn't need to make this step, but you're trying to make this look as neat as possible. Anybody knows, or anybody that's done it knows, that the punch mate does a better job most of the time. Now I should should say it does it better all the time. It's just that sometimes it's not perfect either, but. You try to haggle that around there with a knife, you're going to make a mess. So, that is the that is that done. I'll put my maker's mark on it, and I'll, um, I'll I'll do the stitching, and I'll come back. So, we've finished the sewing. And the next thing, or at least that part of the saw, one, the next thing is the, the welt. And uh, folding it over and stitching up the side seam. So, because this is, uh, well, for two reasons. The grain, you'd have to do it with tooling leather too, but uh, also this being uh, um, holster and strap, it has a slight amount of finish to it so so in order for the glue to stick you have to rough it up I don't bother doing the full width of the welt I just do the outer edge enough to catch the stitching um, and of course we have to do the weld too
This is just water. I put it on now so it has time to soak in. This is for the just to make it fold a little easier. In case you're wondering, actually, I, 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 we haven't got to the point yet, but I could mention that if you had tooled it, uh, uh, if you had used tooling leather, rather, and um, uh, you had dyed it, uh, you wouldn't finish it. The finishing comes after the wet forming, okay? The um, has to be because the finish uh, it, it's either gonna uh, depending on what finish you use it's either going to keep it from soaking up water or it's going to wash off when you wet form it so you the finish has to remain off now uh, this uh, being holster and strap um, the finish will let the water through what finish there is on it and uh, and it doesn't seem to be diminished by the or washed away by the by the water, so I don't really understand. Um, the first that I used was was uh, mahogany, and um, it was um, it didn't appear to have very much finish on it. And I thought, well, okay, it's, it, you know, it, it's not very much finished, but some of this does. Now, this dark brown here, it has a fair amount. The chestnut has even more. And um, if, you're, if you're using it a single layer, it has no problem because it soaks in from the back. But if it's uh, double like this, sometimes it's a little difficult. If the water's warm, it works better but for some reason with this dark brown the water doesn't have to be warm well I should say hot the the water here in the shop is probably lukewarm anyway but or room temperature maybe I don't know it would be room temperature whatever the room temperature is
once you get ready to fold it over, I normally start in the bottom because of course that's the where you where you know where the end is. And you have with with the where you, we didn't allow for any extra on the one on one side or the other, and it'd be a little hard to do that anyway. But you uh, have to be very careful to get it lined up within. Well, so there's always a tolerance, but. folded really well actually. So I'm going to sand that and I'll shut off the camera while I do that and then I'll come back. So with that sanded um, I'll uh, stand up so you can see that. I just normally cut this little bit of the welt back down here and get rid of it. Then we bevel. This corner, I just trim this off here. Kitchen Groover. And I'm going to sew that. I'm going to shut you off until I come back. Okay. So I got that sanded. I touched up the bevel. Now I don't usually uh, burnish these now, I just dunk them. And the one thing I did want to mention, I didn't put my maker's mark on there, but that's because um, I used to do it that way, but uh, sometimes the, the wet forming uh, makes the maker's mark not as crisp. I'll just show you this. I mean, this is not too ceremonial. I have um, no running water in the shop here, so uh, it's outside my house. So I just have a bucket of water. That's about all you want. You don't want to get this in contact with any sharp objects right now because it'll make a mark.
Now this is the bolt that I spoke of. It's an 832 by half inch long with a pan head. I don't bother with the washer now, but I use a washer on there to finish. But, um, and I just do it that way rather than use the strap. Now once that's done, then you can put your crease in it. Not really a crease, not much of a crease, a little bit of a crease. And then the mold gun. This is uh, 1873. Or a replica of an 1873. Five and a half. And I just wiggle it like that so that it gets it, uh, you know, makes uh, sure that it's gonna draw easy. Form the, the lip so that it so that it'll uh, let you reholster and then that's all that gets for now I'll let this dry probably overnight then I take the screw out take the gun out and let it finish drying and then we're ready for the rest so when it's going to get to that point I'll bring you back so we're back the uh, been a couple days. The um, holster's dry now. Um, these are the parts that are left, and uh, I'm going to burnish the edges on each, and then I uh, grease them with Aussie, and then uh, put them together. So I'll bring you back um, for the assembly. So, we have the holster and parts uh, burnished and greased. Now, this is, uh, I didn't do any finishing because this leather is already finished. Um, to put tan coat over top of it is just a waste. Um, maybe if you was uh, using something with more shine like a Sadillac or Resoline, well then yeah, it would probably show up, but the tan coat, it just wipes on and wipes off. Now, the um, burnishing, I didn't show that because I already have that in another video, um, just normal burnishing, I burnished with water, and then because I'm not putting any finish on, um, I use beeswax to, uh, after the water. Um, and that uh, should be a, a good burnish. Uh, now, the um, one, the other thing I should mention that I forgot to mention when I was doing the sewing, this seam right here, um, you have to be careful with this uh, because it's so thick. Now, if you're using a sewing machine, um, it's a little bit easier, I think, because you can, um, all you have to worry about is staying on your line and holding it so that the, the edge here is vertical okay now with uh, with the punches um, you're gonna have to punch through all that um, which is you know substantial and and try to get them straight so uh, just a little warning that uh, that is a tricky bit um, but um, now that we've got it here, uh, it's greased. Uh, I like to put grease on it just because if somebody gets home and gets in a hurry and takes it, you know, uh, gets it out uh, in the rain, well then um, I don't want them little spots on it, right? The grease will keep that from happening. Now, this is our strap, and, and I didn't go over it, but this is... Uh, um, this is the way the strap is made for a right hand holster. Uh, for a left hand holster, you know, you'd have to flip the pattern. Um, the, um, 
because and the reason is made it's made uh, this way is because of this side over here being um, tapered okay or, or cut at an angle you want to this to wrap around follow that angle but wrap around and the strap be straight now if you can see I don't know if I can get that the straps are straight this one is more or less perpendicular to the to the this part of the strap but this one is at an angle okay so anyway that's something you want to remember uh, the one in the uh, package of, of drawings is uh, for laid the way it uh, is is for right hand holster and you want to flip it if you want to do a left hand holster so I usually start with the straight side um, and as I said in the description uh, or I'll say here for the benefit of the video viewers um, I don't uh, punch the holes first I fit the strap to the holster right now and then um, I don't have to worry about where the holes is punched so all I do is wrap uh, you know um, if you didn't take notice what I did I sort of eyed it up got it in the middle of the holster here put the strap through the slot bring it around and holding it in place I make a mark on the strap in the middle between the two uh, slots okay that's where our first half of the strap goes and because this is going underneath I don't want any excess material so I cut off the that bit off the end now this uh, snap has to go from the back to the front so I just use a fid and just work that hole out a bit so that the snap post will fit in like that. Okay, and on the underneath bit, I use the the um, male part of the snap like that. Now I'm going to. Uh, I have to set up my my press so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna set this and then I'll come back so for anybody interested I use uh, for the most part snaps from buckle guy I don't know that it really matters you but good quality snaps are important and I find his to be pretty good and the um, um, a press is a very important part of putting in a snap properly. Um, you can muddle through with a with a, uh, the punches, but I I try to use this press whenever I can. Now all I do I don't know if you can see that all I do is I bring the strap around and uh, then I'll I'll mark the other half uh, where the snap wants to go you know in relationship to the snap that's already there just like that and if I was only using this pattern for one um, holster then uh, I could probably put the holes in it, but as you vary the thickness of leather, you would have to vary the distance between the holes. And as you vary the different holsters, you'd have to change patterns, and it's just easier to do it this way.
Um, so I, I use one pattern for all, all my holsters. Now I leave a little bit extra on there because you want something to get a hold on to pull. Um, now the snap goes in from the front this time. The post. And this is the other half. And just like that, you get a good set, straight, not bent over. That's the big thing. So now I set that aside for now. And I work on the, um, the hammer thong. Now, um, where are you? There you are. Now, this is just a, a modeling tool from Japan that I bought. I don't use it much for modeling, but it has a nice round contour here, a spoon for, for, and it gets in that spot very good. And you have to kind of open that up, um, because you're going to be putting the, the lace through there. Now, then I take a piece of, uh, just wax thread. This is kind of heavy stuff, and. Um, I've made a the hammer thong. It's a piece of one eighth lace. This is Kodiak lace, uh, about that long. I guess overall the maybe some um, how long is that? Um, eight inches uh, loop tied at one end, and then I pass that through. What you want to do is go in the one and out the other. So we have it in the in the little window. You'll want to be careful with the lace. Uh, some lace, some types of lace will break where you pull them through because it's a bit of a strain on it, so you have to be careful. Um, so then that, right, we have it to there. And then we just take this little end, which is just for dress and not entirely necessary it'll work like that but um, and I just push it up through this last hole bring it around and pull it tight okay now so that is complete or that part of it. Then I take this strap push the ends through snap it in place. Now if you opted to do without the block, that would be what you would have. Now, with the block, if you went with the T-nut and the block, um, you have here a little, it's an 832 flat, or number eight flat washer, um, and an 832 by half pan head uh, cap screw or 
machine screw, I guess this one is, but it doesn't really matter what you have, but that would, that works. Now, um, line it up with the T-nut. Tighten it up, and there, we are done. I'll put the mold gun in it so you can see. All right, zero retention. Okay, and now what you can't see is that uh, the wet formed holster is harder than it would be if it was just if it wasn't wet formed um, I was working with styrofoam and that stuff gets everywhere so anyway so there is the holster the video the um, Pattern is for a three inch belt, um, and the block is set so that the, th as you, I think you could see it there, see the block in there, and that is so that the, the belt goes through there and it doesn't move back up and down. Um, anyway, so I said I would give you a look at the tooling. It's not much, very complicated. It does dress it up some, and um, it's just Vayner's and uh, Mule's foot, and a couple uh, passes with the stitching groover. So there you have uh, my newest model and the tutorial for with the uh, pattern that I supply on my website. If you're interested in purchasing the pattern, go to my website at gwleathercraft.com or .com, .net, doesn't matter, and um, it'll be there. Uh, there is a charge. Uh, I feel I can charge for it. Um, it's not free. It wasn't free to make it. It wasn't free to, to design it, and I feel that it is worth what I'm asking. And if you... Uh, if you pair the the pattern, the description, the written part of the description, and the video, you should be able to quite easily make a holster and end up with something very similar to that. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.